Haltech and today I'm here at Custom Bugs and Busters in Penrith and I've got Mike with me. Mike, tell me about what you do. Well basically as you can see we're a VW specialist, um, taking old Volkswagens into the future, bringing them up to today's standard, um, turned a passion basically into a company and a business. Okay cool, now you've got this drag car here, tell me about the drag car now. I've got a 64 combi bus myself, what's different between the engine you're running here and you know, something like what I've got. Oh, apart from the 600 horsepower difference between yours and mine, there's a, a fair difference actually. All right, so, uh, so tell me about, about the engine you're running here. Well, it's a 2.8 litre Autocraft derived engine, so it's still a flat four, just basically on steroids. Everything's right. been beefed up to suit. Okay, so what, let's be honest, what's Volkswagen in this thing? <laughs> Well, the concept's Volkswagen, everything's Volkswagen. I mean, as far as a genuine part goes, if you really want to know, a dizzy drive. Well, there you go. So we have a genuine <laughs> Volkswagen distributed drive here, best part of the car. Um, how about horsepower? How much horsepower are we making? Um, just over 500 of the tyres on a soft tune at the moment. Right, so you really do have 600 horsepower more than I do. Okay, Almost. that's cool. Um, supercharger, turbocharger, nitrous, what are we running? Um, it's a turbocharged engine, um, basically methanol. Rather than, uh, rather than petrol, yep. we're running alcohol uh, to deal with obviously detonation issues with yep. big boost. Yep. Uh, presently 22 pounds of boost, still a baby, but that's where it starts. Yeah, 22 pounds of boost is a baby in, in one of these engines, is it? In drag racing terms, very much. All right, well, that's, that's, that's good. Now, I can't imagine there's, there's too many full drag racing Volkswagen gears out there to build a business on. What's your bread and butter? Well, the bread and butter is the day-to-day -day servicing. Um, I do primarily 80% of my work is engine and transmission building okay. um, in the, in the air-cooled range. I still do some late model stuff, but predominantly, I say 75% of my work is air-cooled. Okay, and you're a big Haltech dealer. Yep. What do you do with Haltech ECUs in a Volkswagen shop? Well, as you know, like Haltech's bigger line is towards racing. You talk racing these days, everyone talks Haltech, but I've found a market where I can bring the Howtech ECU into an old car. I can bring it up to today's standards in economy, drivability, the whole lot. It's a set and forget scenario. You say, for example, someone like myself might have a 64 Volkswagen Combi, blue and white, it's pretty cool, but runs on a set of carburetors. Um, tell me about economy and um, how do you go about that? I mean, what do you end up with? Someone wants to go from carburetor to fuel injection, what do you typically see? Well, basically, the reason they're going from a carburetor to EFI is because, A, they're sick of the flat spot that a carburetor integrally has. You know, you, you, can't, you can't get rid of the flat spot because of the design of a carburetor. It's either good up top, good mid-range, or good at idle. Um, basically, there's not enough adjustability, and that's where the ECU comes into it. I can adjust the fuel everywhere they like. So, primarily, I'm getting rid of flat spots. I'm getting rid of the poor economy that a carburetor delivers. With the injection, I can chase a target. Closed loop lambda is the best thing in the world for us. All right, all right. So, so we've got drivability. Uh, we've got fuel economy. What about no, a lot of modern cars have things like check engine lights and uh, and that sort of information? D do you set up anything like that with any of these cars? Well, as you're well aware, Haltech has check engine um, and and engine protection all built into the ECUs, part I've of their standard software. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Probably one or two. <laughs> But I, I utilise that. For instance, we have a Volkswagen Beetle daily driven street car. Constantly, you find that at Eastern Creek running 11 2 at 120 mile an hour in a full street steel street car. And so on hang one. On, let's, let's talk about that. Volkswagen Beetle, we're talking front wheel drive, new Beetle turbocharged no, no, no. from the factory last year, or what are we talking there? 1970, air cooled, rear engined, 2.3 litre. It's driven to work on a daily basis. It does a half an hour to a 45 minute commute. And you can take it down to Eastern Creek and drive it on the strip, 11.2 at 120 plus mile an hour. I mean, 11.2, we're talking that, that chops WRXs and Evo skylines get upset with those sorts of speeds. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Right. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And, the, and the beauty of it is, I'll just touch back on the point you touched on with that engine protection. We've had an instance where that car lost oil pressure, and by having the engine protection enabled in that particular 1970 model Beetle, we saved the engine and constantly I see Volkswagens with rods hanging out of the block because of not having that ability. Yeah, okay, that's, that's a great thing. So you've got an old car that you're making fuel efficient, you're making it easier to drive, nicer to drive, and, and you're also saving people money because you've got things like engine protection. Um, I guess 
uh, engine rebuilds, then that might not be good for business because you're not getting as many engine rebuilds. <laughs> Uh, but I guess you've got happy customers. Absolutely. Happy customers return. That's right. All right, so let's walk through the drag car. Let's walk out in the back of the car and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll actually take a look at what you've got. Yep. All right, so I'm seeing a lot of custom fabrication work under here, Mike. Tell me about what's, what's been fabricated and, um, and who, does, who does your fab work? Well, I do the fab work myself here, or what I can do, I do here. And, and out of this, there's probably 95% that we've done ourselves here in-house. Does that include the chassis? Um, the chassis was actually a, a rolling chassis we bought from Puerto Rico. Yep. Um, then we chopped it up and fixed it, more towards what we needed. Sure. The car was originally designed to run naturally aspirated. Okay. So we had to change the chassis a little bit to handle the turbo power and, and beef up a few components, but primarily the chassis, not the body, but the chassis was built in Puerto Rico. Okay, speaking of turbo power, uh, what kind of turbo are you running? Uh, precision dual ball bearing turbo. Precision turbo, great turbocharger. Yep. And um, tell me about the Haltech on here. I see lots of, there's quite a few wires and Haltech boxes. Yep. What have we got? Well, it starts with a 1000 ECU, Platinum 1000, um, running a wideband methanol, so we can run that in closed loop as well. Um, all that also runs through the IO box. We've got EGTs going in, um, basically runs two sets of ID2000s per cylinder uh, to deliver enough methanol to feed the engine. Okay, so we've got lots of fuel in there. Now you've mentioned um, wideband, closed loop wideband twice now. What's, what's the purpose of, of doing closed loop wideband control in a car like this? It fixes my mistakes. <laughs> fixes your mistakes, okay. So, so you've got a, uh, a Haltech methanol wideband controller in there and so yep. you set a target air fuel ratio. Absolutely. And you have some limits plus or minus a certain percentage. Yep. And, uh, and if you're not quite hitting the target air fuel ratio that you want, you allow the ECU just to make some adjustments to give you the actual air fuel ratio based on what that wideband information is telling the computer. That's correct. I so mean, sounds like a smart thing to do. Absolutely. I mean, it's an air-cooled engine. We only get so many runs on the dyno before it's too hot to play with again. We, we haven't got the luxury of a, of a radiator and big fans and that to keep this thing cool. So we only get limited time on the dyno and then basically we've got to go to the track. So it cleans up the tune-up for me. Excellent. Sounds like a really smart thing to do. And do you use that for things like diagnostics as well? Yep. We've, we've linked that back through the race pack dash. Yep. So all the Haltech comes straight across to the Haltech and we log that every run. Then we come back with the wideband on there. We can download the run, look back through and see what the computer was changing. Yep. And we can go back and then apply that real time. All right. So you log what's happening with the FU ratio. Yep. If it's making any difference with the wideband, then you log it. You look at it, you go back into the map, and then you apply that change to your main map. Absolutely. So next time, hopefully you go out, then there's, there's very little correction because you've made that correction. Yep, that's map. correct. Sounds like an awesome way of doing things. Now, is there anything else you want to point out that's maybe a bit different in this engine, apart from the fact that it's a 600-odd horsepower <laughs> Volkswagen? Well, obviously, we've got, time, we've got room constraints um, and things like that, so everything had to be sort of made low and, and try and keep the centre of gravity down. But... It's basically, as you see, it's, it's what you get. All right, the big question is, how fast are we going to see this thing go down the track this year? The, the best time so far that we've recorded is a 9.2 at 158 miles per hour. Now, but I know you can do better than that. Absolutely. What's I'm, your aim? We're aiming for very low eights to a high seven. Um, with a bit more time and, and obviously a bit more work, we, we, we just started on the anti-lag and that's where it's starting to show some results. Awesome. We're going to bring those 60 foot times down. Absolutely. Get you off the line and try and run a seven. Yep. All right. Can't wait to see that. Me either. <laughs> well, there you have it. Haltech ECUs are not just good for six second drag cars and 600 horsepower Volkswagen gears, but you've got old cars that are converting from carburetors to fuel injection. We've got, uh, we've got engine protection, old cars driving better, fuel economy. Mike from Custom Bugs and Buses. Thanks for having us and we'll see you next time on How Tech Heroes. Thank you.